Hey, GED students. Um, I had a student message me on Facebook struggling to solve some two-step equations. She'd watched the full-length video, uh, but when she started seeing these problems that looked like fractions were involved, it got a little scary. So we're going to take a look at four examples here. I've got two of one style and two of another style. Uh, we're going to check them both out today and see how it's not really about the fraction here. It's more about the order of operations. Let's take a look. So the first thing I'd like to remind you is that when simplifying, mathematicians simplify, that means perform the um, operations that we see, like if we see a minus sign, you know, minusing would be simplifying. So uh, we simplify in using what's known as the order of operations. Instead of moving left to right, uh, we do groupings first. Then after that, we deal with any exponents, and that includes a little floating powers and their opposites, the radicals, the little check mark houses. Then we deal with multiplication and its inverse. So notice I said, <clears throat> and its inverse. What just happened to my screen? There we go. I said multiplication and its inverse. So I mean multiplication and division. Same step there. And then finally, last thing we do is addition and its inverse. So addition and, of course, addition's inverse is subtraction is the final step of the order of operations when you're simplifying. Simplifying. But algebra and uh, equations, when we reach that, introduces us to a new concept, a new uh, way to think about math. It turns out that when we have an equation, we can undo simplifying. We can do the opposite. We can take operations away. And doing that is what we call solving. And what I want to point out to you is when solving, you actually work the order of operations backwards, backwards. So you should take anything that's adding or subtracting first, then anything that's multiplying or dividing then any exponents uh, or, uh, you know, their opposites, those radicals. And then finally, you deal with groupings absolutely last. Groupings are the last thing you deal with when solving. Okay, so let's go ahead. Using this fact that I'm solving here, I'm trying to get this letter alone. I'm trying to like here, I'm trying to get M alone. So I'm solving. I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of that in order that M could be alone. So I'm going to work the order of operations backwards, meaning that I need to move any numbers that are adding or subtracting with M first. So I hope you guys can see that this 3 is currently adding with M. We see this M uh, expression and then this plus 3. And so I am going to get rid of that first. I'm going to do the opposite of adding 3. I'm going to subtract 3. This is my balance change line. And Natalie, when I was looking at your work and a lot of students work, so don't think this doesn't apply to you, rest of the internet. Um, I noticed that your change wasn't always balanced. Make sure that if this side says minus three, then I see a minus three on the other side of the equal sign. I should be doing the exact same thing on both sides of the equation. That's what makes it legal. Now, after I make a balance change on both sides, that's when I write my new equation. So let's take a look. Let's look at what would happen at this left-hand side of this equation. And when I say left, I mean left to the equal sign. So on the left-hand side, adding 3 and subtracting 3 are opposite, so they'll cancel. And then I have to drop down what's left. And I think that's where uh, you and Natalie and a lot of students get stuck. So drop that thing down. M over 5 is the thing I haven't dealt with yet. I know it looks ugly. I know it looks like a fraction. But all I want you to do is write it, not do math with it. So don't panic. And then notice, this is a new equation, so I will have an equal sign. Whatever's on the left will be equal to what's on the right. And why are these two things still equal? I know the left is still equal to the right because I made the same change on both sides. If I change two equal numbers the same way, they will still be equal. Okay, and now I never look back up. In fact, I have had, um, when I'm working with students who have issues with seeing algebra, I will make them take a piece of paper and block all this off now and not look at this again. I want you to be looking at the new equation we've written to know what to do next. So now, again, my goal is still to get the letter alone. Now I only have one number hanging out to get rid of, this 5. And in order to get rid of something, you always do the opposite. Well, what is this 5 doing right now? It's dividing. M is being divided by 5. I know it looks like a fraction to you, but remember, fraction bar means the same as divide. So the opposite or inverse of division is multiplication. And so I'm going to take this entire right-hand side, and I'm going to multiply by 5. 
And that is legal if and only if I do it to both sides. So I'll multiply that side by five as well. And do you see, I wrote it on the same line this time when I multiply, but you can still see I did it in a different color for you. Can you see that I did the exact same thing <coughs> to the left-hand side that I did to the right-hand side? I balanced my change. Okay, now let's see what happens, what my equation will look like now that I made a change to both sides. <coughs> oh, pardon me, sorry. So I'm going to grab up my different color pen here, and let's take a look. Multiplying and dividing by 5 cancel so that M will be alone. This is an equation. I need to see M is equal to, I want to see that equal sign, and 2 times 5 is 10. <coughs> nice job. So I know this is solved. I know this is done because my letter is alone on his side of the equal sign. And so that is my solution. M is equal to 10. <coughs> Wonderful. Let's do another example of that one before we move on to the next one. Okay. Grab that blue for my balance change again. Okay. So once again, uh, my letter is not alone on his side of the equal sign. There's two name numbers hanging out with him. There's a two, that two is dividing with him, and there's a seven, that seven is subtracting with him. And when we said when we solve, we're going to do the order of operations backwards. So we're going to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So I will move the minus seven by doing the opposite, adding seven. Now the rule of equations is we can do whatever we want as long as we do them to both sides. So I see that plus seven on both sides of my equal sign. Now let's see what my new equation will be after I make that change to both sides. If I add 7 to the left-hand side, it's going to cancel out the subtracting 7 since those two things are opposites. And all that will be left is this expression. It will drop down. I always, 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 always keep my equal sign in my new equation. Natalie, watch out for that issue that so many students have of dropping the equal sign. If you do that and you don't have an equal sign, you'll get so muddled. You won't know where to put things. That equal sign is integral, especially for more complex uh, equations than this. We'll have four, five, six step equations on the GED. We have to know where our equal sign is. <laughs> okay. And then on this side, 11 plus 7 is 18. Great, I'm almost done. My letter is almost alone, but there's still a number hang over here hanging out with M, the two. Uh, in order to get rid of it, I have to do the opposite of what it's doing right now. Well, what is it doing right now? Right now it's dividing. Fraction bar means divide, so I'll do the opposite of divide. I will multiply both sides. And I'm going to multiply by two so that my M will be alone. And the rule is whatever I do to one side, I have to do the identical thing to the other side. So make sure it's a two that I multiply uh, by again. And again, you can see my balance change. I did it in blue because it's a little hard for students to see when it's on the side like we usually do with multiplication. So multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 cancel so that my M really is by itself. And what is M equal to? Well, there's the math I said I would do. I would do 18 times 2. So 18 times 2 is 36. So for this one, I would get M is equal to 36. Okay, great. So these are pretty simple. Even though we saw a fraction, we don't have to do fraction math because a fraction is also an act of division. We just dealt with it as an act of division. Now let's go look at another two examples that also involve fractions, but the order of operations gets affected a little bit. Let's go take a look. So take a look at this first example that I have for you. And that's, if that's hard to read, sorry, that's an F. F minus three over 2 is equal to 11. So I still have two numbers hanging out with my letter. You can see I have a 3, uh, and it's minusing, and I have a 2, and it's dividing. See, that fraction bar means 2 is dividing. But something has changed in my order of operations. So let's just note to ourselves, the order of operations is first groupings, then exponents, then multiplication and its inverse division, and then addition and its inverse subtraction. Well, what's changed? Um, if you saw my order of operations video, which I surely hope you did, where I do the what I call the real order of operations, you know that the top and bottom of fractions make a grouping. This right here is a grouping. There's an F and a 3 doing something up in the top of this fraction. This is a grouping. And remember, when we're solving, we're working the order of operations backwards, so you're going to save the grouping for last. 
Leave that group alone. Three is grouped with F. Leave it there. Let's move the other number first. I'm going to move this two. It is outside of the grouping. We will move it first. Okay, now you might be saying, Kate, how in the world am I going to move that two? Again, you always move things by doing the opposite. So ask yourself, what's the two doing? Don't panic at the sight of a fraction. Look at this. The two is just dividing. There it is. It's dividing this whole expression up there. And so if I want to do the, I would have to do the opposite to get rid of it. So the opposite of divide is multiply. So let's go ahead. We'll take this entire thing as ugly as it is. As it is. I don't care. Put it up in parentheses. We're going to multiply by two. Again, why? Because that's the opposite of dividing by two. Now the rule of solving is literally, you can literally do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. And so I'm going to multiply the right hand side by two as well. Now let's see how that changes my equation. What will my new equation look like? Well, on the left hand side, multiplying and dividing by two cancel. And all that I have left is the top of this fraction. It's not even a fraction anymore. It's just f minus 3. See how our scary fraction problems went away? And now on the right side, of course, 11 times 2 is 22. And now, like I have told you before, don't look back to here. Your equation is a super nice little one-step equation now. If you want to get f alone, all you got to do is move that little 3. Again, we always move things by doing the opposite. The opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3, so I will do a balance change here, adding 3 to both sides of my equation in order to isolate f, get f by itself. So subtracting 3 and adding 3 are um, opposites, and so they cancel. So the only thing I see left on the left-hand side there now is that f all by itself, just like I wanted. And then on this side, 22 plus 3, of course, is 25. And I know I'm done because my letter's alone. f is equal to 25. Cool. Let's try one another one of those just a little bit faster to make sure we got the hang of it. Again, I see that S is grouped up here in this fraction, and so I'll leave my groups till last. I'll get rid of this divide by 6 before I handle the grouping. Okay, so the opposite of dividing by 6 is multiplying by 6. And I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So on this side, multiplying and dividing by 6 cancel. And so my new equation will just have an s plus 16 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, 10 times 6, well, I know how to simplify that. That's just 60. And now I'm almost done. My letter is almost alone. I just need to get rid of this add 16. So I'll do the opposite. I'll subtract 16. I'll balance my change because I know that as long as the two sides stay equal, I am safe. Adding 16 and subtracting 16 are opposites so that S really is alone. And 60 minus 16 is, oh goodness, it's been a kind of long day, but I sure hope it's 44. <laughs> All right. Great. So I hope I cleared that up with you about those problems that seem to have fractions in them and how we can deal with that. Um, if you have any questions about this or any other uh, math GED concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.